All right, what it is, how's it going? Hope everyone is well. This is part two to time is greater than money, right? Time is greater than the dollar signs. And I'm gonna explain why. Um, so what we have here, once again, we have the 24 hour hamster wheel. Right, this is a 24 hour hamster wheel, right? So real quick, we have 24 hours in a day, right? Um, this is why this is why energy management is very important. Um, this is why not wasting time is very important. Um, Patience, discipline, and focus is very important, okay? Because time flies. And we don't have time. We really don't have time, right? Some people, they don't understand. You know, they want to insult, insult us saying, oh, sounds like a loner. Sounds like, I'm a lone wolf. I'm a lone wolf for real, but I choose to be a lone wolf. I choose to embrace it in order to accomplish my goals, right? But in the end, I'm not a loner, right? I know plenty of people. I know plenty of people, but I need this alone time to do what I have to do. And I selectively visit people and hang out with people at my discretion and very seldomly. Right with the family, I mostly see them at family events. Bang them out with, with one stone, you know. Knock, knock, uh, knock all those birds out with one stone, and then I make, and then I make time for my woman, right? But this is the hamster wheel right here. Never mind the peace sign that came out by default. But let's say, right, you sleep eight hours. So one third of your day, right, one third of your day is eight hours hypothetically speaking if you get that right and then you go to work for eight hours but you have lunch and they don't pay you for that lunch or you might get paid for lunch but whether or not you get paid for that lunch right um that's nine hours of your work day given to the job on average right so then you would hypothetically have seven hours left, but you don't have seven hours because on average, most people spend four hours a day on prep time. What does that mean? Your time commuting to and from work, right? Um, often we get to work a few minutes early, maybe like 15 minutes early. And then sometimes we're still on the premises 10, 15 minutes, even 20 minutes after uh, we clock out. So that's a half hour right there. You have to shower, right? You have to prepare your clothes. You have to prepare your meals. If you have children, most likely that prep time is more. It's five to six hours because, <clears throat> because um, you have to take care of your household. You have to organize and declutter, right? But let's say four hours, eight hours to sleep, nine hours at work, right? You work your eight hour, you slave your eight hour shift, and then you have a, a hour lunch. So eight plus nine, that's 17. Then we got four hours of prep time, commuting to and from work, showering, getting dressed, getting ready for the next day, decluttering, prepping a meal, right? Cooking a meal. If you didn't cook for the week, you know, you got to figure out what you're going to eat and put it together. Um, even if you go buy the food, that's time spent buying the food. So let's say that's four hours. You got three hours left, right? Daily of quote unquote free time. Again, if you have kids or if you have other responsibilities, if you go to work and school, right? you'll probably have less than that. If you need more time than these three hours, 
if these three hours are not enough, if you have to sacrifice more than three hours to accomplish prep time, or if you're working more than eight hours a day at, at the job, for a lot of us it's 10, 11, 12 hours a day, you're sacrificing sleep, free time, and you barely have any time to um to organize your life and get your life in order, right? And this is purposely designed to keep you trapped in the system, all right? So that's not to say that quit your job, hurry up and quit your job. No, the, the, the solution is not to impulsively quit your job. The solution is to start analyzing your life, right? And to see what is taken away from your precious time. And then start cutting back on those things that is cut, taken away from your precious time. So that you can devote that time, right, back into number one, your health and your well-being. That's number one. You have to take care of yourself first. You have to be able to heal yourself, right? Because we're going to... You're not just gonna, your life is not just gonna turn around from one day to the next. <clears throat> There's a lot of healing that takes place, right? And that's gonna require time. And the more damaged you are, the more stress you have gone under, post-traumatic stress, the more baggage and bad habits, the longer amount of years you have spent in that dark abyss, the more time you're gonna need to heal. And a, and a major part of that healing is that sleep. You've been surviving on four hours of sleep for five years, ten years. Your body's going to charge it to you. That's all I got to say about that. So that's a 24-hour hamster wheel, right? And this is why time is greater than money. Because even before the money... And it's not even about the money. This is about abundance. And we're going to get into that. Right? This is what this video is about. And I'm excited to be able to use my board again. Right? This beautiful 3 by 4 glass board. <clears throat> that I hung up myself. That I'm proud of. I'm proud I hung this up myself. I get to write and express and, pre and present information like the nerd that I am. Okay. Let me make sure. Make sure I get this nice and clean. Okay, so that was the um, that was the uh, ham twenty four hour hamster wheel. So with the twenty four hour hamster wheel, we're locked, right? We're locked in fear. In fear. Let me explain the formula, right? That these uh, <laughs> controllers have come up with. And everybody knows this. Even you know this. This is, this is nothing. But this came to me the other day, right? This breakdown, which is nothing deep. But it came to me a couple days ago. And um, last week, came to me last week on my day off and I was contemplating it and I wrote it down and um, it was very profound to write it down, analyze it, look at it and really contemplate our lives and how we've been living all this time. And, um, and by not bringing awareness to it, we stay in the hamster wheel, running that hamster wheel. And before we realize it, we're in our 60s and 70s and we're worn out, right? 
That's why I feel for a lot of my elders that they figured this out late, right? Um, and this is why I say, do something for yourself every day. One thing that you can do for yourself, right? Even if it's just a, a simple gesture, a simple thought, uh, you take 15, 30 minutes for yourself and privacy and silence, right? To find inner peace. Because never getting off that hamster wheel and continuously living for others, you wear yourself out, you will become bitter and resentful. You don't want to be that person. But the dark ones pur pur purposely put us into that, uh, into this formula that I'm going to express to you right now that we all know. And they have us distracted with entertainment, right? Versus us investing in education, we are distracted in entertainment, which robs us of our time without us even knowing it. We are robbed. No, before we know, because we do know it. We know we're wasting time, but we don't see it as such. And the years fly by. And before we know it, we have nothing to show for it. Because we didn't invest in education and experiences so that we can grow. So this is the formula. For the fear-based formula is... Uh, labor, right? Labor over time, right? And for most people, it's 40 hours plus, right, over time, times stress. Because the longer you work, the more stressed out you are, right? So it's labor times your health is what you're sacrificing, right, for Money, a paycheck, Federal Reserve notes, right? Currency, digital one, two, three, four, five, six, sevens into your bank account. This is the formula. Labor over time equaling money. But it's not just labor over time. That labor is costing you your health because over time you're putting in 40 plus hours, 40 hours plus. The more time you're putting into labor, the less time you're dedicating towards your health, right? So you're sacrificing your health because you are increasing stress. And the stress will take a toll on your mental health, your physical health, your emotional health, the longer you work. And you're doing this all for the money. $3 signs. Why $3 signs? Because on the lower end, you could be getting paid minimum wage. On the middle end, you could be getting paid. You could be middle class. On the higher end, you could be a high income earner. But all of this, right, will have you stuck in the hamster wheel and it will have you locked. It will have you locked in a fear. I don't remember where I put the eraser. Oh, here it is, right? It will have you locked in fear, right? Let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. Right. 
it will have you locked in fear, right? That fear will have you failing exceedingly at reality. Why are you failing exceedingly at reality, right? You're failing exceedingly at reality because you, we have been failing exceedingly at reality under this spell. This is a spell that has been casted on us in order to keep this system going. This, 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 this spell of scarcity, right, keeps us trapped in fear. We are, and, and, you're, and we are failing exceedingly at reality because as my man, Big Bro, Trend Genius, who makes wonderful content, has said, this is his words, fear is false evidence appearing real, right? So we're under this false illusion that, that we are under scarcity. We have to be on the hamster wheel. There is no other way. We lock ourselves in working these jobs, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 hours. We have no life. So our life, and we know nothing else, right? So because we know nothing else, well, those that didn't invest in continual learning, which is many, right? And you, they have given themselves to a job five, 10, 15 years, and they know nothing else. They learned nothing else. They thought they had it made in that job and they decided I'm gonna retire here. I don't have to learn nothing else. They are in fear because if they lose that job, sometimes these people can't sleep because if they were to lose that job, they wouldn't be able to make this so that they can pay off their how their mortgages and their cars and feed their families. Because over the 20 years they gave to that company, they chose to not upgrade their level of knowledge and their skill sets. So they're stuck like Chuck. So their asses are stuck in fear, right? And they're failing exceedingly. So not just failing, they're failing exceedingly because every single day that you do not learn something new, you are doing yourself a disservice. You are putting yourself, it's like a, the Monopoly board, right? You're putting yourself on the Monopoly board on the losing end every single day, right? It's like you're not even, every day that you don't learn and you're stuck in fear, you don't even know. Um, it's on the Monopoly board, you're, you're not even rolling the die and taking your turns. You're just skipping all of your turns. And the bosses, the manipulators, the ones at the top, right? The ones that are pulling the strings, the ones that are making all the money, bringing in massive amounts of abundance at our labor costs. Man, they're, they're winning at the game. And they haven't they had us believe and are still having us believe while well, those that are stuck in fear, not me and not you, that you know better now when you have woken up, despite that we st are still at our nine to five jobs because we see a way out. But they have those believe that are stuck in this fear that there is no other way, that they have no choice, but there is a choice. And that choice is to up your knowledge, level up your knowledge, your understanding, right? So. This is a uh, this is the slave formula. Labor over time will equal the money, but that labor is your health. You're sacrificing time 40 plus hours and over time that stress will multiply, right? And then you get your FRNs. But you're just getting this every single week this is the same. Every single week this is the same. Maybe you work a, a, a couple hours overtime. Maybe your hours, maybe you work a few hours less. So, okay, it may fluctuate a little bit. If you're on a salary every single week or bi-weekly, that's the same. Maybe you get commission and you get a little bonuses. So, okay, maybe it fluctuates. But for the most part, you know what you're getting every single week or every other week, however you may get paid, right? And most of us, and that's why we're stuck in this fear because most of us are living paycheck to paycheck, right? I'm still one of those. I, I will admit that, right? I'm being tested hard right now, very hard, right? This formula right here is testing the shit out of me right now. So I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm not going through it. 
but I have faith that I will pass this test, right? But most of us are living paycheck to paycheck. Most of us are two or three paychecks away from being homeless. Many of us one paycheck. This is the formula now for love-based consciousness, for abundance, right? Okay, so this is the abundance formula right here. The abundance formula, right? Instead of labor over time. We're providing value over time, right? So we're given value over a certain period of time. But see, the time, instead of 40 hours, the time has an infinite symbol. Because, and I'm going to explain why. Because I'm going to explain first with the knowledge, and then it'll make sense with the inf infinite symbol, right? It's indefinite. Let me explain. A lot of people don't understand this concept, right? At first, I didn't fully understand the concept because I had to unprogram from the, from the conditioning of making money by putting in labor over time, right? Sacrificing my time for money through labor and health, sacrificing my health, sacrificing my time and my health, right, for the money, which is the typical programming that all of us have. So it's difficult when you speak to people about, you know, providing a product or service, uh, you know, creating services that in products that can make money in your sleep. A lot of people just look at you dumbfounded. It doesn't compute. So it took time to undo that, unlearn that, and really 
comprehend this on a deep level. Because I said, how the hell do I provide value? If you don't know how to how you're going to provide value and what kind of value you're going to provide to the people, right? It's more, more likely than not, you lack knowledge. And if you have the knowledge, then perhaps that knowledge is being clouded by social conditioning and mental programming, right? And, and, and toxic belief systems and thoughts, right? Because you know something, there's something that you're good at. There's something that you know more than other people. There's something that you know, right, that other people will resonate the way that you have to explain it. But either way, value is directly proportional to knowledge. So the value that you're going to give people, right, if you want to create abundance, right, and mind you, I wrote abundance, not money. And I'm going to get to that in a, in a few minutes. But if you want to create abundance for yourself, right, you have to provide a service and or product for people. And it's usually mostly a service that that um that provides value to people. You have to be of service to others. This is not about greed, right? This new business model is not about greed. It's about collaboration. It's about uplifting, right? It's about healing. It's about providing value, right? Things that are of use. Value is just something that is useful. Right. Um, but that comes with knowledge. If you have no knowledge, you cannot provide value. Right. So you have the see, there is no shortcut to this. The learning doesn't stop. This is not for the people that want to be lazy and want to be intellectually lazy and they don't want to read. They don't want to do their homework. They don't want to research. If you don't if you don't want to do the homework. If you don't want to read, if you don't want to research, you will have no choice but to be stuck on the hamster wheel unless by some stroke of luck and by default, you know, you don't have to be on the hamster wheel. But then again, then again, if you are taking a handout and you're dependent on that handout, what are you going to do if that handout runs out? Because you're not creating abundance for yourself. If that handout chooses to cut you off, what are you going to do? And also taking handouts from people or from entities, right? Institutions is very risky if you're trying to be independent and if you are an independence free thinker, because now these entities will want to dictate what you do and cannot do, how you think, etc. Um, there are politics involved that can compromise your mission if you are a, a truther, a truth seeker, a speaker of truth, a bringer of knowledge and wisdom, right? Which, which the goal is to be independent. The goal is to not be taking handouts from people. When you take handouts from people, right, you are at their mercy. You, you subject yourself to their manipulation, Knowledge. There's no shortcuts. This is how you will provide value. So you will be given knowledge, but not only will you be given knowledge, but because you are a, a student, right? And you are forever learning, um, you will also be receiving knowledge. So the knowledge that you will be able to give will be multiplied because you don't stop learning. You don't, you just because you, you reach a master level does not mean that you stop learning. There's, so, there's always more to learn. Knowledge is infinite. We can't know it all. So we have to be humble even when reaching master sad status. There's more to learn. There's more to improve. And that knowledge grows. And because that knowledge grows and is multiplied, that value is exponentially multiplied. Because over time, we can exponentially gain massive amounts of knowledge. That's why the time is, is unlimited. Because under the hamster wheel, right? Under the hamster wheel, you can... um make, let's say, $100 an hour, but you're working 60 hours a week in some high-paying corporate job, 70, 80 hours a week, right? If you're making $100 an hour, you're probably working high hours as well, right? Um, most, more likely than not, may not always be the case. Um, 
but you're you're gonna be slaving for it, right? But you have a cap on your income. There's only so much of a raise that your bosses are gonna give you. And then you will either have to start a side hustle or get another job. But the but the the trap is, right, with the hamster wheel is even with starting a business with the, with the traditional business model, you can be a slave to your business, which is why I don't advocate. I mean, you can do whatever you want to do, but I do not advocate opening up a business that will make you a slave to your business. I advocate starting business ventures, right? That will make you, where you create systems that make you money in your sleep. I am not a financial advisor. I cannot advise you on this. I'm not a financial consultant. I'm not a business consultant. You have to do your homework and figure it out for yourself. But let's say, for example, right, you write books, you create merchandise, you have products, you do affiliate marketing, you set up the work to promote those products and services, and that can generate income while you sleep, right? There's people making tens of thousands of dollars a month doing this versus you opening up a restaurant. If you open up a restaurant, you have to be there six, seven days a week. If you're not there at that restaurant, you know what's going to happen? Your employees are going to steal from you. And that restaurant is not going to be very well managed because the restaurant business is a high stress environment. I know I worked in the restaurant business 12 plus years. I've managed several restaurants. I've supervised restaurants, right? I opened and closed. I know what it takes to run a restaurant. And people have told me, you should open up your own restaurant. Hell no. Hell no. There's two things I would never do, right? Number one is be a teacher. And I salute you teachers because we you're underpaid. You're underpaid, but it's too damn stressful, too much to put up with, too much energy. I'm not good for none of that. I'm not good. Crowded and hyper people and demonic activity. No way. That's not my role. But I salute you teachers that do that because you're needed, you know, and, and, and the education system has to be completely restructured, right? And I'll never be, I'll never own a restaurant. I'll, I, I wouldn't, I didn't, I wouldn't want to deal with that. It's too, you become a slave to the restaurants. I've worked 12 hour days, six days a week in a restaurant, 14 hour days. And I see people, like I see owners of restaurants, like they open seven days a week and they're always there. And I always wonder, damn, when you want to take a vacation or, you know, what if this happens? Like, because if you're not there as an owner, you can't expect your restaurant to run good, right? So those are traditional business models. This also falls into other types of businesses. Those type of businesses will still have you in the hamster wheel. And those type of businesses that, that make you a slave to your business, right? You will work more being a boss in that type of business than a nine to five working 40 hours a week. You'll work a hundred hours a week, right? You have to, you invested your life savings into that business. You have to make it work or, or live with the um with the shame of being a failure, right? And and all your money went down the toilet. Right? And the truth of the matter is this. The truth of the matter is that even if you invest into the new business model, which is creating systems that make money in your sleep, on the front end you're going to invest a lot of time, which is why I showed you the hamster wheel pie chart which is why time is greater than money. So you're going to, in the beginning, you will work, but you're, that's because you're putting in a lot of time towards the education and you're putting in the time towards the experience and execution, right? Education, experience, execu education, ex execution, experience, the three E's, right? You, you teach yourself, you go put it into practice, right? And you gain that experience which that experience is wisdom, right? So over time, which is indefinite, right? Because in this, in this, in this new business model, right? And this, this, this freedom model, right? You can gain 
a, a large amount of knowledge gives a large amount of knowledge and value over an indefinite amount of time and at the same time gain wisdom because wisdom comes with experience, right? So in this business model, for, uh, instead of, you know, slaving long hours in a restaurant just to break even or even make a profit after years of, of, of you know, operating at a loss, um, or even if you're not operating at a loss, even if you're a, a successful establishment, but at the cost of your time, right? You have people that are motivational speakers, right? One of my favorite motivational speakers, her name is Mel Robbins. She gets paid $100,000 to talk. She's a motivational speaker. She gets paid, right, $100,000 for one hour of speak. Can you imagine making $100,000 in one hour just to talk? Why? The amount of income that she generates is indefinite because of her knowledge, right? She's able to provide value over an indefinite amount of time. And she's able to provide wisdom too because she's wise. She has gained wisdom and she's able to gain even more wisdom. So with more wisdom and knowledge, she's able to provide even more value over a shorter amount of time, right? Or whatever, however long it takes. But this is like a quantum, this is a major quantum leap. Right. And so you generate abundance. Why abundance and not money? Because it's not just about money. See, this skill set right here of being able to provide value over time and attaining and being able to give large amounts of knowledge and continuously growing in wisdom indefinitely. This model will generate you not just capital, Federal Reserve notes, checks, cash. Digital one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nines in your bank account. It generates abundance. Why abundance? Because it generates opportunities, business deals, right? Other resources that can be traded for your time and your knowledge, right? Which will lead to creation of wealth. It's not just about the money, right? Because no matter what type of system, if the, if the because one day this system will all financial systems and political systems collapse and a new one takes place. But it's like I told you. It's like I told you in my last video. There's seven functions in life that will not cease to exist. Okay? So the American dollar can collapse and we might go straight into crypto, let's say. Right? This political system might fall away and we'll have a new political power, right? At the end of the day, people are going to breathe, people are going to drink, people are going to eat, people are going to pee, they're going to poop, they're going to sleep, and they're going to have sex at the end of the day. It's going to continue. There could be earthquakes, famines, war, Pestilence, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, fires. People, are, one more time, people are going to breathe. People are going to drink. They're going to eat. They're going to pee. They're going to poop. And they're going to sleep. So this model works anywhere in the world. And especially now with the internet, there's no excuse we leverage the new business model. We leverage the internet to set up systems, utilizing our knowledge, wisdom, and our skills to generate abundance and opportunities, right? So that we can be able to provide for ourselves and then some, because those resources will then create new opportunities so that we can help everyone else, right? Um, I learned to live off of very little, but I don't plan on staying living off of very little. I have plans. I have big plans. Me personally, I'm speaking for myself. I have things that I need to do. I need to travel the world. I need to travel the rest of the U.S. And there are big projects, right? I have big ambitious projects that's going to require massive amounts of resources. I'm not going to limit my potential, right? 
just because I, I'm able to live off, off well below my means. Um, I'm going to generate this abundance. And so this system can be done anywhere, no matter what the political or social scheme is. There's always value to provide, and that's the key to being useful to society and generating wealth. And when you are in this formula, in this state, you're no longer in the hamster wheel. Now you are piloting your vessel, your life, right? You are. You have accepted the path that God created for you, not man. Man created you for the hamster wheel. God created you for a path towards the stars, towards the heavens. And when you are on this path, then you are in love. And love is living off vibrations enthusiastically. Enthusiastically. What kind of vibrations? Enthusiastic vibrations. Excitement. Right? This is high positivity. You're living off vibrations enthusiastically. And that's love, baby. And that's why love is going to... Is love. And you keep hearing it over and over. That love is the key. Love is a secret. Yeah. Right? I came up with this. This all came into my head. I wrote it down. It was last week, Friday or Saturday. I think it was Friday. And um, and I was just here and I, and I wrote this all down in my notebook. First, I wrote it on the board. Then I wrote it in my notebook. And uh, I knew I was going to use the whole board for you to talk about this. But um, I'm going to do, right? So this is part two of my time is greater than money video. I'm going to do another part. Um, related to this, but more of um, my next video. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to drop this one tomorrow. My next video will be on the 10 things to do, right? To raise your vibration and maintain a high vibration, right? So that you can remain excited and enthusiastic about living your life purpose. But that takes healing first. It's not just about thinking positive and putting forth the effort and working hard. And first you have to you have to you have to release the baggage, all the things that are weighing you down. You have to be light as a feather, right? So there's healing that must take place. And I'm going to do a video on that next, on these 10 things, right? So that you can help raise your vibration and keep your vibration high. And even when your vibration goes low, because you're going to have that, that's normal. It's supposed to happen. You're supposed to be tested. You're not going to be high and hunky-dory all the damn time, right? It's like I've said before, life isn't all about hugs, kisses, and rainbows, right? And pink unicorns and, and, and smiling all the time. You're going to have your lows. You're going to be tested. And then you will gain wisdom and experience and knowledge through these lows and, and even deeper understanding so long as you learn these life lessons, right? But this is the key. And you can't focus on this if you have no time to invest in you. You need at least one hour a day to learn something new. And you have to pick how you're going to learn something new. Are you going to take a course? Are you going to read a book? Are you going to watch an instructional video? Right. So use YouTube to your advantage. Don't use YouTube just for entertainment. Learn something. Set up a playlist of educational content so that you can upgrade your mind and your life and your soul. Right. Your spirit. You're not your soul. Your soul comes from the creator. Your soul is already higher self. But you need to upgrade what you are in this flesh right here. There's learning to be done. Just because you got your master's degree and PhD does not mean that you're done learning. But anyways, that's all I wanted to share with you. Um, so look out for my video tomorrow on the 10 things to keep your vibration high and to raise your vibration. Right. So remember, the hamster wheel wants to keep you locked in fear. And being in that fear will have you failing exceedingly at reality. Right. But when you are in love, you're living off vibrations enthusiastically. That fear will have you continuously sacrificing your labor and your health. Right. Labor. So, so, so sacrificing your health through labor over time and increasing in stress. Right. And it will keep you locked in there, robbing you of your time. And then you're so stressed out, you go 
do things that are unproductive, wasting time watching TV, wasting time with unproductive people, then you got to wake up on Monday again. That's why you're all melancholy on Sunday nights, all melancholy and depressed because you got to go back to the slavery on Monday. So, and then, and then you're anxiously waiting for Friday because Friday night, your vacation starts until Sunday night again. But you got to use your time wisely if you want to get out of that. You got to use your time wisely if you want to get out of that so that you can continuously learn. Because only through learning, through gaining more knowledge, right? So you're going to have to put in the work. God is not just going to give it to you because you pray for it. You're going to have to prove yourself that you are worthy for it. And you're going to have to seek knowledge. What did God ask Solomon? As the story says, Solomon asked God for knowledge and wisdom. See, this is the formula. It's written in there in the Bible. But see, they don't they don't break it down for you. It, it's like we're just giving it to it like it's some historical story. But they're, they're giving you the formula. Solomon asked God for knowledge and wisdom. And God said, right, as the story goes, I'm going to multiply your riches, your abundance, because you have asked for knowledge and wisdom. And that's the key for value. If you want to take the quantum leaps, right, and buy back your time and make back, uh, 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 generate, you know, abundance for yourself in an indefinite amount of time and not have to slave clocking in and being stressed out that you're going to be late for work and get fired. Solomon asked for knowledge and wisdom and he got abundance. There's no shortcuts. Peace and love.